everybody, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight, get ready to laugh. At least I think so. We're joined by stand-up comedian and Air Force veteran. I love the combo. You can catch him on October 18th at the Tampa Improv. Vincent Oshana, Vincent, Vinny, Vincenzo, however whatever. you want to. Yeah, yeah whatever we want tonight, right? Yeah, if you're in the New York mood, just, hey, Vinny, how you doing? But if you want to be professional, Vincent. <laughs> So it's up to you, Laura. Right. Well, we'll we'll try to start out in some sort of a professional manner. I don't know what's going to happen. I first saw you or or came upon you, I should say, because my husband may or may not have sent me the video that you do where you act as though you are a deaf gentleman who mm -hmm. then gets some sort of an earpiece, like a cochlear implant of some variety, and yeah. they can hear for the first time. And initially he sent it to me and I was like, Oh, I got a little emotional because I'm like, oh, this guy finally hears. And then the wife starts talking and he's like, get this thing out of my ear. I don't want this anymore. That's yeah. how I first saw you, Vincent. That's so funny. That's so yeah. funny. Laura, Laura, I get, I get, mind you, because it's gone crazy viral all over. I'm talking about there's people from like the Netherlands and they're sending me, they're like, I'm trying to try translate it where they're like, I was watching this thing crying like, oh my God. And then the yeah. flip making it laugh. <laughs> And I've gotten so much <laughs> feedback, negative and positive. Like people pissed off, like you made me care. And then I laugh, you jerk. So it's really, it's it's a it's a funny, like double-sided coin. Yeah, you may have noticed you can't please everyone out there. Uh, most uh, of the time, anyone with the Trump last name pleases most people, as you yeah, could imagine. Obviously. However, yes, you, you're never going to get everybody on board. I also loved the one you did where you were a, a trans whatever, a transplant where you pretended you were a plant, you yeah. were a, tra a transformer, you were literally like you were everything. And it's this long video about how like in the workspace, they don't know what to do with you because you're just a big problem and you're causing all sorts of issues. Yeah. But the truth is at the base of all this stuff, whenever we get down to like raw comedy, I think a lot of this stuff is funny because this is how so many of us see it. And this is how so many of us feel but Vincent, it feels like we can't talk about it. So how did you how did you even start doing all this stuff? Because I guess you've kind of gone like viral, so to speak, online. And, and that's how most people know you. Yeah. So so, um, I, you know, as you said, I was in the military and I was always a maniac and we can get into that. But, but Laura, I was in Los Angeles, you know, uh, Trump was going for president and being I mean, I was always funny, but I saw the change of like how you only one side can make fun of everybody. One side couldn't. Right. You know, SNL is just like, if you don't see oh. it, it's literally just, it's unwatchable. Like in the days totally. of like Chevy Chase and all those brilliant minds of Chris Fowles, they touched everybody. So uh, just, you know, connecting with uh, Patrick, I found him on Instagram and he was a Syrian. And then he gave me this platform, which, and we talked about God a little bit earlier, but God, when you align yourself up with God, Laura, he gives you these moments and these opportunities that you obviously, people always think, well, God didn't do this. or no, no, he opens the door. You got to know to walk through it or jump through it. Yes. So I met Pat and he gave me this. And one of his first things, Laura, was Vinny, you come here. He goes, we make fun of everybody. You're not making fun of one person. Make fun of everybody. So I just like that I have the platform that Pat gives us to flip everything on these people and show them. Like, if I'm going to be trans and it's accepted, like that video, I want to be trans, you know, translate. When I'm late to work, I was a transplant. I'm transracial because, and mind you, I'm joking about it, Laura. This is really happening. People identifying right. as boy or girl. Why can't I say that I'm black? Why can't I change my race? If I could change my bio and you have to call me a woman, why can't I change it? So it's it's a it's an amazing thing that I get this platform now to make fun. Because guess what, Laura? I'm uncancelable. What Hollywood's going to, I'm not in Hollywood. I'm in Florida. Right. So it's amazing. There you go. There yeah. you go. I love it. Well, you just talked a little bit about the fact that you did serve in, in the military. Thank you for your service. You're very right welcome. Right out of high school, uh, as I as I understand, was that sort of, was the plan just like go into the military, kind of see what happens? What did you think was coming down the pike for you, I guess? It, uh, it's crazy, Lars. So I was, a, I was a high honor roll student in high school, but, you know, we didn't have that much guidance. Me, my brother, my sister were all basically like one year apart. I got out and I kind of just didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I had the grades, but my parents didn't have a lot of money. So college really wasn't an option. So my brother joined, which, you know, he's younger than me because I just was like in limbo for like six months. And then I joined and then my sister joined. And uh, oh, wow, 
Yes, and mind you, both parents, not from this country, legal immigrants. I know that's weird in this day and age. Legal yep. immigrants, all three of their kids served in this military. My brother was deployed during war. My sister, uh, Veronique, just uh, retired after 25 years of the Air Force. I got out to pursue this, and I, it, it it taught me. I People were always like, oh, I left because it's like, no, no. The military gave me uh, all the tools, all the being, you know, making my bed, being clean, being punctual, being a man because my father, you know, drank and really wasn't there. My mom was the 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 real hands-on one, but the military really taught me that t- to become a man. And then once I found, you know, I could leave and do what my actual calling was, which was comedy. I was always a comedian. Uh, that was it. So it was it wasn't really planned. I just fell into it, did my years, and then I I got out. That was it. And uh-huh. now I'm here. Yeah. And did you immediately kind of after military service say, you know, I'm just going to go into the the comedy world? Yeah, I, 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 my favorite was like George Carlin and watching all these comedians. So I literally packed the bag, left, and uh, went to California. My cousin Michael David brought me in, let me live there. I took classes, did stand up, and the first audition, Laura, I went on. Damon Wayne's from In Living Color was in there, and I. Oh my I, gosh. Yeah, and I will never forget, Laura. I'm walking down this little, you know, these those little theater studios where people audition in L.A., and I'll never forget. I'm walking down, and I see yellow huge yellow alligator shoes. I'm like, Jesus, guys, feet are huge. And I look and it's homie the clown, major pain. I'm like, you want to talk about like, oh uh, my gosh. and I had to do a scene, I nailed it. So, and again, God, I leave the military within six months. I'm on a show called uh, The Underground on Showtime. So, you know, I got, I got very lucky, very blessed, took me under his wing and taught me basically all the ins and outs of the, of the entertainment, Hollywood, Hollywood world and stand-up comedy. So can't, I can't, I couldn't ask for a better life. It's a, it's wow. amazing. Well, yeah. I lo- and I love how you give so much credit to God. I, I agree with you. I think, you know, if you're listening and you're, you're asking God for guidance, God will show you the way, but you do have to take the step and then pursue whatever it might be. You have to put the work in on your end as well. It's not just that he's going to hand it to you. Yep. Have you always been uh, religious? Have, has this, this always been something that sort of has been in your, your life? So, so Assyrians, and we spoke about this briefly, Assyrians were basically the first Christians. I speak Aramaic. I speak the language of Jesus Christ. Like we said, the movie Passion of the Christ. I didn't, I didn't have to read the subtitles. I was in the movie. And it's funny when people are like, you know, Jesus is supposed to come back. That's, you know, if you're, you read the Bible and you're a Christian and everybody's always like, like Vinny, you're going to know what he's going to say, which is going to be great. So if Jesus does come back, I'm going to have need those- to be with you. Yeah, clearly. People like Vinny, what do you say? I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> I'm talking to Jesus. Do you guys mind? Like I'm trying to talk Second. to the man. So yeah, so yeah, exactly. Like, you know, people are going to be blowing up my, <laughs> please tell them that I'm a good person. But, um, uh, Assyrians church when we were kids, you know, we didn't know what they were saying cause it was in Aramaic, but we know we just had to be there. I'm not going to lie to you, Laura. I, I kind of went away from it, went, went a little bit in the military. L.A. wasn't really big in the church, but then um, I came here and and uh, one of our coworkers, Aaron, he was like, Vinny, he felt, I, I'm, and I was going through it, he felt something, Laura, and he's like, you're coming to church with me. Called me, brought me to this church, and I gave myself to God, and, and uh, it's so random, Laura, I'm up there because at this church, they bring you to the front, it's called the Calvary. They're in the front, and it's a moment where they're, everybody's praying for you, people that are going to take that next step. I was shaking, I felt like I felt it, I was crying, and I looked to the right, and Patrick Patrick McDavid sitting there recording. And he was like, yes. And like, you nailed it. God, you know, open yourself up. And people expect this, Lord. They expect, if I prayed and why I wanted this, why did he let this happen? It's like, there's no plan. Nothing is the way that you think. You just have to be open to the fact that when it does hit and when it does happen, you go, oh, wow, this was the plan. And if you're, if you're aware right. of that, then, then life is great. Wow. I, I Amazing. Well, obviously it's been working out for you. You're you're a stand-up comedian, right? You stand up, but you also do a, a lot of this stuff online. What's the difference? I mean, I, I imagine when you're writing like a set for performing in in the, you know, on a stage of sorts, when you're doing like a stand-up routine, that's a little different than the kind of stuff that you're doing online, right? Like how, how have you found that balance to be? Because they, they seem very different actually. Yeah, so so live performance, like stand-up comedy is the hardest thing to do period Laura. like i from improv to acting to everything because think about it with acting with improv there's an ensemble there's people around you if right. you're failing in a scene they you know what i mean they help you especially with sketch but stand up 
You have to be engaging. I don't care if it's five minutes. I don't care if it's an hour. You have to be engaging the entire time. Be relevant. Something happens in the room. You have to be able to call it out. Be funny and go with the flow. When it comes to the writing and the and the sketches and stuff, it's more of a set plan. You could cast. You could find who's gonna you know be there. You can audition. You could do that type of stuff. But when it comes to stand up, it's just you, that's that's the rawest as it gets because. Anything could happen. I've been on stage before, Laura, where some guy tried to run up on stage and fight me, and I had to deal with him oh. and security. I think, and then, mind you, the show has to keep going because people paid for the show. Like, and if somebody's right. drunk, belligerent, and that, you can't just go, okay, guys, time out. I quit. No, you have to go. You have to go with the flow. So it's a it's a very different beast, even though it's still like in the comedy, making people laugh. But uh, I think if you're relevant, you're talking about the stuff that people want to talk because people want people want the truth. People want people want you to make fun of. The 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 real ridiculous stuff that's happening and be relevant like that F thirty five pilot I mean the the airplane that went missing the fighter jet yeah eighty five million dollars this is what this is the state of our military they literally were like this Laura they, remember the the video they're like if you've seen this plane call this number who the hell is sitting at home going yeah hey is this the government listen that jet that you guys are looking for right I here think, gosh, yeah we were watching Top Gun two I thought. I have great surround sound. We thought it was a part of the movie, but it's here. Come, come get it. It's like <laughs> you it writes itself. It literally. Well, exactly. But that's what, see. This is what I love, though, Vinny, about you is that you. It, it, I feel like for so long, everything the the life has been sucked out of everything. Right? Like songs can't be good anymore. Movies can't be good anymore. It feels like the only space left is comedy, where we yep. can actually talk about the crazy things that are happening in mm -hmm. our world. Uh, but it does take guts to go out there and say these things and be willing to put them out there and put them in people's faces because everybody's so scared these days to do anything, to step out of line. Yep. I mean, I think if we don't watch it, man, we're gonna end up in a place where comedy isn't funny anymore, movies aren't entertaining anymore, songs aren't great anymore. Like. We got to keep it going, and thank God, at least in the comedy space, you guys are holding it down. Thank you. No, you're you're 100 right. Just just yesterday, I saw a, a, a news bulletin about uh, Justin Trudeau in Canada. You have to register with the government to do your podcast or anything. That's it's no. insane. Oh, oh yeah, it's in. Oh, that guy, he's a freaking. I'm sure about we'd time. get approved over here at the right oh, view. Yeah. Oh yeah, me and you 100. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, it's like look, it's just it's it's crazy that thank God with comedy and like I said, you could poke fun at them. You have to do it in a clever way because, like you said, they're waiting. Laura. They're in mm -hmm. the shadows, waiting to go. Nope, racist or this or that. Because you listen, we're all everybody talks about everybody. When we were in the military, everybody, black, white, Asian, tall, short, gay, straight, everybody crapped on everybody equally, and it was fun. At the end of the day, we exactly. moved on, Laura, and it was a good time. Now it's everybody's waiting to point and waiting to cancel, which I, I despise that word. Laura, everybody thinks too, in this day and age, everybody's perfect. Let me explain something to you. I am not perfect. You are not perfect. The people watching this, none of us are perfect. We're going to mess up. We're going to split. You're going to say some stuff that you didn't say. You're angry. You're going to say something that you didn't mean. We have to accept the fact that it happens. If they're genuine and they apologize, apologize, and we move on. But we live in a day and age now where people are like, no, 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 done, 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 done. Ruin their life right. and ruin their career, and they don't give a damn. But I I give a damn, and it's 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 fighting the good fight and letting people laugh because at the end of the day laughter it is the best medicine because when somebody's being funny laura do you think about your problems do you think about race do you think about the war do you exactly. think exactly are you we need we need more comedy no you forget it for a minute you're like oh i now i remember like we can actually enjoy one another's company things <laughs> that are funny to me are funny to people who have a different political view than i do like yeah yep. let's let's right. bring it all together with the comedy i love it yeah, I think, the, to be honest with you, I think the government should pay comedians. I'm dead serious. Have a set thing where you pay comedians. They have these shows where people could come to free just to laugh. Like, everybody's taking everything way too serious. It's like, guys, yes. lighten the hell up. What happened? We were the entertainment of the of the world. It's America. It's like, now everybody's all scared and sad. And, Laura, I'm telling you right now, I will not, I'm not changing one bit. I have my views. I have my views on God, my my political views, and my comedy. And it's just I wear my heart on my sleeve. And if you don't like it, here's the beauty of it, Laura. Change the channel. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's grabbing your head going, you have to watch Vincent O'Shawn and Laura Trump. You have to sit there. No, no. 
get the hell out of here. Don't watch us if you don't like us. That's yeah, it. Check I'm going to give I'm going to give you a round of applause for that cuz I totally Thank agree with that. But every you. everybody's got an opinion. You so you've been very um you've been very outspoken and and forward facing with your political views. You haven't yep. shied away from the fact that you do support President Trump. I yep. assume you'd like to see him back in the White House. How has that been though for you in the entertainment space because Pretty clearly, Vinny, they're not big fans over in Hollywood or in that entire arena of our family, my father-in-law. Have you gotten any sort of pushback on, on the fact that you've been very open about your support? 1,000%. I remember mm. when the Trump phenomenon was happening. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in L.A. And I'm, Laura, I knew it from the beginning what his movement was about. I, I genuinely could have cared less about the name of the person, what right. he did, what he's doing. Your father-in-law pulled back a curtain for us. He didn't have to do it, and he sacrificed everything. His name, his legacy, his money, getting arrested, court, your last name, his kids, 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 kid's name is always going to be affected because of what these people are doing. Okay. And it, like yeah. I said, it could have been anybody. So being in Los Angeles and, and supporting like his, the movement, it was insane. I would do shows, Laura, and people would be like, Hey man, like managers of the club, you can't be like, Hey, the whole Trump, I'm not even joking. You can't, you can't be like talking about it. And I was just like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, these people, they're all, they don't, they're all liberals. They don't feel like oh. I felt in L.A. at that time. I felt like I knew how it felt to be like, you know, like gay guys in the 80s, how they had to be in the closet. That was me. I was like, we, there are a lot, of, lot of closeted Trump supporters for this very big reason. Time, big time. They're like at parties, Laura, and they're like Trump. Like, hey, were you talking about Trump? They're like, no, no, I have a lump in my neck. I have a lump. No, I, well, I wasn't talking about <laughs> no, Trump. No, for sure. I was not talking about Trump, please. Yeah. So it was very difficult, but I like I don't I don't see my career being where it would be today if I was there. But at the end of the day, who's to say that that side is right? I get it that it's Hollywood is extremely liberal. But I, when are you guys when are they going to admit or that they're you know, you, you messed up a couple of times. You messed up here. Admit that you're wrong right. and we can move on from there. Well, how about the fact that half the country views, you know, this person very positively? I don't know. What's your what's your take on there as to the general vibe in the country, because I imagine you go perform at a lot of different places. I, yeah. I mentioned you're coming up in a couple of weeks in Tampa. Mm -hmm. um, what, I mean, if you do, you know, sketches or skits or whatever on Trump or on just the general state of politics, where do you think we are in this country? Do you, do you feel like we're kind of in the same place we were maybe four years ago? Do you think anything has changed? I like to get a view from, from people out there who just, all over the place and interacting with folks all the time. Um, I, it's crazy. I don't. I don't think it's close. I mean, it's. It's not as close as it was when he was running and the Russia and the all the lies and the rate all the the BS. It's actually quite interesting, Laura. I'm seeing a shift. I'm hoping it's not too late, which you know one can say, like especially what they're doing right now. But I've seen a yeah. shift from people that literally were like, I hate and hate because they were told and brainwashed and taught to mm -hmm. hate, which I don't even like using that word. I'm seeing a shift, African-American uh, community shifting, especially when, you know, they they, they arrested um, uh, the president. And then, you know, the Hispanic votes. It's like people are waking up because listen, you could BS and 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 get people and get people. At some point, Laura, the, the, like, the, the stitching starts to fall apart and people look and they go, wait a minute. Everything that he was saying, not everything, but the majority of what he was saying was right. We're seeing it. We're seeing the numbers. If you can't admit right now as a regular American citizen, the country is going to crap in this oh. past four years, then guess what? You are delusional. There's something wrong with you where you can't just stop and go, you know what? You guys, he was right about this. He was right about China. He was right about the economy. He was right about the border. Are you? How can you how can you deny it? Are you that strong to your party that you have to die on the sword? You have to wake up. You have to wake up because it's getting to the point, Laura, where it's like we're losing that grasp. And this guy, yep. your father-in-law, has sacrificed everything. I saw him. Uh, he spoke after he got out of court in that kangaroo court with a judge. I'm pretty oh. sure you saw it. The judge is taking off his glasses to pose for a photo. For his photo op. 
Laura, right then and there, I would have been like, time out. Who the yeah. hell is that guy? Get him the hell. He's cheering for the camera. We we get it, but look at how it, how embedded these people are where the law now is involved. And he's still winning. That should be a wake-up call. He's still winning, and they're still trying. Love him or hate him, he's doing it for you, and you're – I almost said your dumbass doesn't even realize that what he's doing and sacrificing it all. So you guys wake up right. and live in a country that's livable for your kids, kids, kids. That's what it is. I know. But you know what? It's funny because people ask us all the time, like, how do you deal with it? How are you guys doing? Oh. And, you know, I mean, I, I didn't know we were talking about God the whole time, but I do have to keep faith that there is a, a bigger overall picture. There's a higher power in charge here and that when history ultimately reflects back on my father-in-law, our family, anyone with our last name, it's going to be very positive. I think one day people will finally see, and I mean, maybe we'll all be long gone. Maybe this will be 150 years from now when all this uh, happens, but there, you're right. There is only so long that you can just, you know, pull the wool over people's eyes, that you can uh, lie to people without them kind of being like, wait a minute. Something's yeah. not right here. So I think you're right. I love to hear that. I mm -hmm. hear it from other people too, that there is some shift happening. There's something changing. There's something going on right now in this country. And man, I'll tell you what, if we don't get this right next November, 2024, uh, yeah. I am concerned about what ultimately happens. I have two kids. I want them to be able to live in the same country I got to grow up in. Um, you know, it's, it's a crazy time, but I want to say thank you. Vinny, to you for, for being so outspoken and unafraid to go out and, and lay it out for people because it is not easy to do. Believe me, I can't, it's my last name. So they know where I stand on things out there, yeah. but, yeah. but not everybody has to do it. So really thank you for doing that and being willing to try to wake people up. Cause I'm sure you have. I'm and, and you're, you're very welcome, Lauren. Thank you for, for doing what, what you do. And it's like, I, it's, we have, like you said, one life to live. And I tell people this all the time, everybody, everybody out there that's watching, whoever sees this or shares it, we all have something in common. Whether you're tall, short, black, white, female, uh, gay, straight, we all have an expiration date. That day is coming inevitably. I don't care what pills you take, yep. what vitamins, what injections you're taking, we are all going to die. We have one life to live. Make it a positive and meaningful life. So when I'm dying and my grandkids, or everybody's around me, I know that I I tried and I tried to wake people up and I try to let them know because people say ignorance is bliss. I don't believe in that, Laura. I believe ignorance is ignorance. If you're going to yeah. just walk around stupid, then you're stupid. And people are like, Vinny, why are you wasting your time? You're never going to affect or I, I, I disagree 100 percent. I would like to walk around with people that are awake, not that woke BS that's oh. around. I want people that are awake, Laura, so they get it. So you make the right decisions moving forward. You you put yourself in the right groups and you have these friends because at the end of the day, Laura, this is a team effort. We're, this, we're the human race. There's I don't believe in this black and every, they're always, the left is always trying to play this race divide BS, feminism. It's like, we're the same thing. We're all this blood, flesh, it's the same. Laura, you're sitting there, I'm sitting here. At the end of the day, we're, we're brother and sister and I think it's, 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 worth fighting the good fight for for the good and for, for humanity and having God. Because at, at some point, God's going to be like, you know what, guys? My experiment, this is it. I said I was coming, and he's he's coming at some point, so you better be right in your mind and, and right in your soul. Plain Amen. and simple. Amen. I love it. Well, look, look we want to see more of you. Where can people find you, follow you, stay up to date on what you're doing? Okay, so uh, my all my handles are at Vincent Oshana for my ex, aka Twitter. My Instagram is at Vincent Oshana. Um, I'm, I obviously work at Valuetainment. Uh, I have a show. It's Valuetainment Comedy. It's on YouTube. I have another show. Uh, it's called The Unusual Suspects, where we tackle all the stuff that me and you were talking about. And I'm on the PBD podcast. I'm in the vault actually right now. Pat, Pat's giving me this uh, this space to do it. But uh, yeah, and on on October 18th, I will be at the Tampa Improv at 7 p.m. for just one night only. It's a Wednesday. Uh, for tickets, they could go to my bio in my Instagram or at uh, improvtampa.com uh, for tickets. And like, honestly, Laura, this is like, uh, 
Pat, Pat was talking to me about this. When you're living a good life like this and, you, and your talent and everything, and then opportunity and hard work hit right here, I'm right I'm right there, and it's a really good feeling because I'm I'm right in the body and the mind, and and this is it. This is my time, and I can't I wait. I love it. Good for you. Good for you. We're going to keep up with you. Do you think X is ever going to make it? Are we calling it X ever? Are we just going to say well, X, also I, known as Twitter? What are I'm, we doing with that? I was just going to ask you, how long? I don't think you could ever, because it's tweet, <laughs> tweet me. Nobody's even like X, X me. It's always going to have that dichotomy. It's like, why? I know he wanted yeah. to be different, but at the same time, it's like, now I'm trying to train myself to be like X to try to be cool, yeah. but it's like it's Twitter. It's I still Twitter. call it Twitter. I mean, honestly, but yeah. bless his heart, Elon. He tried to he tried to make it happen. Well, maybe one day. I don't know. Well, let's, listen, let's say, see. listen. Name, the name aside, the fact that he spent sixty. Well, how many? How much billion? What do oh, you? Oh, something crazy. I forget. And Too much. Just to let us be able to speak and let say you say what make we want. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, God bless him. I God. love it. I'm here for that too. I'm I'm all about that. Let's do more of that. Um, all right. Vincent O'Shauna, you are the greatest. Thank you Thank for keeping you so up much. us laughing. Good luck October 18th at the Tampa Improv. And we'll keep up with what's going on. And we hope uh you maybe we could see you in person sometime. That would be amazing. Next time I'll come because I know you're a freaking triathlon. You you're probably gonna ride you're gonna ro ride your bike here. We could have done this live. Yeah. So Next time I'll ride my bike down to Port Lauderdale. Yeah, we'll just live. and just not even winded. You're like, okay, so anyway, I'm like, Jesus, Lord, how'd you get here so fast? But uh Ready yeah, to go. but, but Lord, thank you so much for having me. Uh God bless you, God bless your family, God bless your follow. I hope everything that's happening, listen, at the end of the day. God, God has his back because I, I know, I know what he's doing and trust me, God doesn't, God, I always say this. I said, God calls on people to do things and it's up to you because some people just go, no, no, to answer that call and do what he's doing. I salute him hundred percent. So do I. He's one of the greats. Okay. Vincent, thank you so much to everybody at home. As always, thank you for joining us right here on the right view. Make sure you like subscribe, share, and follow, and we'll see you back here next time for more. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it. So I'm like a lot of people. I love to wear an Apple Watch, but I hate how it looks. And I scoured the internet to search for the best looking Apple Watch cases I could find, and I found it goldandcherry.com. They have absolutely beautiful watches, as you can see here. Everything is waterproof. Everything looks good with different outfits. You can get sporty, you can get fancy, but they are great quality, uh, made out of Delaware in the United States of America. And they have been kind enough to give me a promo code that I can share with you if you wanna get your hands on one of these as well. It's Lara. T L A R A T is the promo code to get yourself a discount at goldandcherry.com. And not only do they make Apple Watch cases, they also make great products for iPads and iPhones, keyboards, your desktop, everything you could possibly need. Goldandcherry.com. Use promo code Lara T so you can get yourself one of these today too. At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say everything that we think and everything that we feel. We have no woke companies guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always going to shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support 
independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump, and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested, my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said, this is the pillow that I want to sleep with. And I gotta tell you, she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow. So it's a big hit around our house. My dogs also uh, happen to sleep on my pillow dog beds. So all around the Trump household, we're big fans. If you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code Trump, again, promo code Trump, you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. Inflation has impacted all of our lives. I don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. A lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going.